Welcome, Council. Welcome, uh, staff and uh, people in the gallery uh, to the special committee of the whole meeting for October 18th, 2022. It's a one item agenda, but it's a really important item talking about the library and town hall. And before we get to the agenda approval, I would like to acknowledge that Wolfville is situated in Mi'kmaq, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq. And as such, I ask that we conduct our business with the seven sacred teachings in mind truth, honesty, love, courage, respect, wisdom, and humility. And uh, with that, could I have a uh, motion to approve the agenda, please? So moved and a seconder. Uh, Deputy Mayor moved and uh, seconded by Councillor Butler. And there's no changes to this agenda. And would there be anybody for public input, either in the gallery or online? No, okay. Then uh, we will move right on to, uh, I'm going to assume staff, uh, Director Lake. Just before Devin gets started, just See by way of, yeah, just by way of introduction, this is going to be a bit of a tag team with Devin doing the bulk of the presentation, but certainly management at the back may pop up on certain slides to uh, to weigh in or help out. So hopefully there was um, a good amount of information that was provided and follow up to the meeting we had back in the spring where council had asked for further detail. And as we move through this process, there's going to definitely be more information that's going to be required as we go along. But the goal today is to have a really good discussion around siting and if council's in a position to select one of the two sites, that would be really helpful to if, if as an outcome, is then we'd be able to move forward with the next steps. Um, one of the things that we'll discuss as we move into the budget process is the library town hall is creeping forward a year, <laughs> every year at a time, it's getting closer. So um, once we get a path on the site, then we can really start to move forward to put that in motion um, to make it happen. So really excited to have this discussion today and make sure you ask a lot of questions and there's a lot of information to wade through. So Devin's gonna take you through it. And probably Devin, as you go, if anyone does have questions, it's probably good to just sort of tackle them in real time. Okay. Okay, good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Uh, so I, as Aaron said, I'll probably do the bulk of this, but um, we do have an expert panel at the back as well. So, uh, <laughs> so we're building on our April discussion um, and other work that sort of surrounded this over the years. Um, this is, report that we're presenting today is pretty specific to the flood risk, the traffic, um, in which we did engage external consultants on. Uh, we also have information on parking um, and maybe we'll spend a bit of time on that. Uh, I know some of the councillors that have sat multiple terms have, have heard some of that song and dance, but um, I think it would benefit some of the newer councillors especially. Uh, some, we have some costing information and other considerations uh, as well. So the staff recommendation is still um, locating the town hall library uh, here at this location at 359 main street and this is primarily based on the site elevations above sea level and uncertainty around future climate conditions so we'll get into some of that in more detail um, just to remind us remind ourselves uh, some of the work that's done been done in the sort of strategy and policy realm um, so we did do a needs assessment uh, with a working group that was appointed by council in 2020. Uh, at the same time, we were going through our municipal planning strategy review and um, within that also did our uh, flood risk mitigation plan. Um, the accessibility plan is very relevant to this project and obviously our climate plan. Um, and I have a picture of the operations plan there because um, all of this gets funneled annually into that budget process. Um, some of the more specific work um, that we've brought forward, um, these are just really some images of the work, but we have had some uh, workshops specifically with council, uh, specifically with our management team, um, trying to really drill down on this. Uh, we also brought forward uh, from Turner Drake uh, an updated uh, population forecast for the town based on a few different um, assumptions, obviously, but you can see the range uh, of potential growth in the town, which is, um, which is quite substantial. So I want to go through each one of these one by one. And 
um, we can probably stop after each one. Is that, does that make sense? Uh, so just coming out of the report, um, th there's more detail there, but just a, a bit of a highlight here. Um, the province is going through a process of adopting Coastal Protection Act uh, regulations, hopefully sometime soon. Um, and they do have provincial statements of interest in the Municipal Government Act around flood risks. So I've just provided these for sort of higher level context, um, just given the decision uh, that we're making here. Um, our own work around our municipal planning strategy, climate plan, um, flood, flood mitigation study um, has bubbled up a number of policies. Um, these are all from our municipal planning strategy. I won't, I won't read them, they're all in the report. This is sort of the meat of the issue. Uh, this elevation model here really just shows um, the realities of the elevation above sea level and the predicted potential water level that uh, you can see in red, the 10 meter water line um, and the existing library site sitting. I mean, it depends exactly where you're at on the site, but let's just for round numbers say eight meters and 11 meters. Um, so we're dealing with a three meter elevation difference, which in the realm of sea level rise is fairly substantial um, and certainly is, is much safer. Um, the other issue that we've discussed before is we, we do know that the Department of Agriculture is investing in the dikes. Um, however, we don't actually own the majority of the dike system. We have a very small section along the harbor front um, and they're trying to maintain many dikes around the province. So how and if and when and how high um, the dikes will be is somewhat out of our control. Uh, so just to sort of conclude this point, um, I did reach out to Alex Wilson, who's the water engineering something. Um, I should know his exact title, but he's, a, he's, he's their flood risk specialist at CBCL. Uh, and he, he wrote most of our flood risk study uh, and just had him look specifically at the two sites uh, from a siting perspective, purely on flood risk. And um, his conclusion is, is on the screen. So he was recommending um, just based on the current elevation and uncertainty into the future, uh, this site here. So I, yeah, maybe I'll just stop there if that suits council. Councilor Elliott? Just, just wondering if what happened with Fiona, um, not to us, but the, the prospect of something similar gives this an even greater incentive, this sighting. I think so, absolutely. And frequency of storms um, that are probably to come, absolutely. That's still okay. Um, so the difference between that one and that one is 10 meters, correct? Does that say three and 13? I should look it up on my screen. But... The difference between the two sites? Yeah. Is three meters. Three meters. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see 10 meters water level, but it's not 10 meters difference. It's three meters in difference. Okay, got it. Um, if someone else so if there's land there and whatever happens down there down in by the old library or the what is current our current library um what would we tell someone else who wanted to build there so we've limited some uses in that area that is below essentially below 10 meters but some of these sites including this area is actually below the ordinary like highest high tide um, that is, is being predicted and below the level that they've recommended us topping our dikes to, which is 8.4 meters. Um, we have flood risk requirements um, that they would have to flood proof their building up to a certain elevation. And we've used 10 meters as an elevation. It, it really depends on where their starting elevation is. And so we also have a, um, a requirement for them to bring their elevation up a bit. Um, the building code is also evolving to have hard and fast uh, flood risk requirements. We don't have those now, so you end up getting an engineer involved. But yeah, that's 
what we have done more recently. I can't speak to projects that were built, you know, in the 90s or before. That's okay. You, you look pensive. Do you have another question? <laughs> Hmm? Wait till the end. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Questions? Okay. Thank you, Director Lake. Uh, so this one is relatively short, but may have a bit more discussion. So we did have some concerns around traffic uh, and a lot of the projects I'm working on right now, there's traffic concerns. Um, so we had recently had Roger Boychuk do a look at the four-way um, just here. Um, so he did a analysis of the two sites sort of against each other, purely based on traffic. Um, his conclusion is here. It, there really wasn't a, a huge advantage to either site. Um, there could be some minor things done to, to make it work, to, to, to have an acceptable level of service. Um, so the, the four-way obviously would have to be addressed in some capacity, not just because of potentially this facility, but also because of the potential growth that we're talking about. So um, it does play into uh, the recommendation that he has in there um, in his four-way study as well. Um, and the other, the last part is really, we're going to have to commit to active transportation investments, better transit, um, and some type of overall behavior change just unless the road network completely changes, we have a single spine through our town um, and a lot of people coming through here at different times of year. So um, we probably will never solve the traffic problem to, um, to some standards, but uh, we're sort of trying to mitigate through this. I can stop there, I think, on that one. Anybody have any questions read traffic? I mean, where do you start, really? Yeah. <laughs> so I got solutions. I mean, just I mean, just to build on um, Councillor Kay and Elliot's uh, point about climate. I mean, when I first read this whole report, I'm like, climate and flood risk is a huge thing. So how can you move forward if you don't have the best location on that? And then Councillor McKay's point on, um, you know, how much more that is below sea level. You know, how will other you know businesses or or people coming to town, how will they, um, you know, address that issue? And you sort of talked about that. Um, but parking and traffic are, even though I've only been on council for two years, are pretty big issues. And reading the, the needs assessment report, it seems like even five years ago, we weren't as concerned about climate as we are now, right? I mean, we've had Fiona, we've had a number of hurricanes, right? So when I'm reading the needs assessment for my, I don't know, was, was it 2017 that you started on that? And it, it most, most people were like, we want the library where it is, right? Now we need to have the library so we can preserve it, right? So it's, you know, and so many years when we're not here, is this building still gonna be here for future use, right? That's the most important thing that I'm looking at. So I'm reading all the, I'm reading all the, the traffic and the parking and I'm a little confused. Now you haven't gone over the parking, but just to, do you wanna go over that first or should I just, yeah. So like, I guess I was just a little bit confused at how many actual parking spots there were. And um, I kind of highlighted, like, I was a little confused because you said there are approximately 739 private parking stalls in the core and core commercial neighborhood area. And then 328 stalls business, 208 institutional, 203 residential. That doesn't add up to 1408. So how many, how many parking spots if we're not, just so my mind knows that it, we're not talking private, like say I'm coming into Wolfville, anybody's coming into Wolfville, how many spots are available for them to park in right now? Just so my mind is clear, if you have that number. I was trying to figure out the math, but then I was like, it wasn't really adding up. And then I was just like, is that an approximation? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> okay. You don't have to have the number now if it's going to take you you know longer. That's okay. That's no, okay. I think I, I was just a little confused on on sort of where we differentiated uh, private between commercial because most people are more interested 
that are coming to town and the traffic flow into where they're parking. I think the number is. Yeah. I'm just confused. Oh, okay. The, yeah, the public parking spaces is here. When, if, if your question is how many public parking spaces do we have available? This is in the core area. So 627 total? Yeah, yes. And then three, okay. Seems like a lot to me. There are over 1,400 installs in the core commercial. 1,400. Okay. In a, so the rest uh, of them you're saying would be private ones? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We have a few different categories. I'll, maybe, rest, that, yeah. okay. maybe I'll just go through this parking slide and then. Yeah. Are there any traffic comments or questions? Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, just before just, we okay. leave traffic. Um, so if I'm reading this correctly, the traffic issue um, needs to be addressed regardless of where we put, which site we choose, right? It's, even if we stay, if, even if it stays where the library is, we still have a big problem, this four-way stop that needs to be addressed and traffic in general, regardless, right? So if it does move to Main Street, obviously we have to address it because, but either way, we're going to have to address, that's a cost we're going to have to absorb regardless of it. So I, yeah, I think the language that's used in Roger's work is, you know, when that level of service gets to kind of an unacceptable level for a certain number of days is generally how it's quantified. Um, for some, that's maybe now. But um, yeah, certainly all the things we're talking about adding are going to exasperate that. Right. So I, I guess that's one of the issues that will be, or things that will be looked at in the costing as well, right? Councilor McKay? Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, I got the same thing. So it doesn't matter where we choose. I mean, really, the town is in its core is quite small we're only a couple blocks away from each other so regardless if we have one here or there there's going to be traffic issues that coincide with each other um i hate to use the word problem although i know people do use the word problem but i mean yes there's, there's traffic but it just means we're really popular so i think that's a good thing um <laughs> or i like to think that anyway um but i think it does then lead us into the bigger things that our AT investment, which we have started, needs to be better, and that is going to have a spillover into our budget again. And what we do with transit, I, I know um, Director Lake has and his team have been working on the micro transit, and I don't think we've had a, a follow up for when you first started that. So that would be interesting to hear back on what that is as well, because I think that would be really helpful, and I think that would be something that people would I, I would use it. Um, and I think a lot of families or other, like lots of people would use that. So I'd really like to see what that is, whether it's part of this, not necessarily part of this discussion today, but maybe one coming up. Yeah. So where we left it is we did the work internally and then King's Transit is going to be doing their report. And a big part of that is the micro transit. So we want that to feed in. So again, once a site selected, my plan would be to let King's Transit know that this is coming. And so as they look at micro transit options for Wolfville in our region, they would be able to take that into account. And that would be a specific deliverable as part of that report. Uh, just before we leave that, uh, I think that third bullet point is really important and I'm, I, I would even like to see it stronger. I think it says we also need to look at AT investments. I, I would hope that at some point as we get through the budget, maybe we will, mm -hmm. uh, along with the costing for this, look at AT investment and I'm, you know, do we need something downtown similar to what's going on Highland or just what, what's the plan for both that investment and the behavior change, which is longer will take longer, but the sooner we start that, the sooner that change will happen. So um, that's just a kind of a, uh, maybe a parking lot point, but I, I really think that the cost of this, wherever it is, needs to include the costs associated with not just the light, but also those other things that are gonna to have to happen. Cause you're right, we are just so congested. And, and yes, I remember Mayor Cantwell always said, it's a great uh, problem to have, but, it, we all know from all the letters we get that a lot of people don't like this problem and and so uh, they're not too happy to have it so what can we do to get ahead of it so it's just a, as a comment more than a question uh, councillor ingham 
Yes, so noted the four way stop will have to be addressed. So when will that be addressed? You know, how, how soon will that be out there quite substantially? Because we already, we are, I mean, as a councillor walking the street, I hear these are the recommendations that you can have there. Can we have lights? Can we have a flashing pedestrian? What, you know, what can we do? I've waited a long time to cross. So, I mean, it's sort of, pro I, I feel it, it's problematic already. I mean, there's, there's long lines going east to west. Um, and so is that something we can look at sooner rather than later? Um, can we have a trial on that? I know we talked about a trial. I'm just throwing it out there. Budget time is a good time to have that discussion, Director McLean. I actually wasn't asking, I was just, I was making the comment that, that, that budget time is a good time for us to see the implications of that. Budget and ultimately the timing of it, if it is recommended and members of council that have been here for more than one term know that this has come forward and there's a gray area of recommendation on it. And so then it does become a key decision point as to which side does the decision fall on because there is some comment that it doesn't quite meet the, uh, I think it's warrants, uh, the traffic flow. Um, and then where's that going into the future? So I'm making notes for the budget Good. process as you were talking Excellent. about it. Well, as, as I recall, and then Jody and Wendy were around the table, it was in, it was in a budget. And I, I, my memory says it was taken out because people were concerned about losing parking spaces. Yeah. But if we're going to, I think that's where this overall behavioral change comes, that that's one of the things that we have to change in addition to getting people comfortable using other forms of traffic, but also, um, you know, I, I was pulling into the parking lot the other day and, and there was a woman pulling out who wanted to park, she wanted to park right in front of L'Arche, but there wasn't, and she, where is the parking for L'Arche? And even the places I suggested were not quite in front of L'Arche enough. So that is part of the behavioral change. I don't know how to do that, but we have to proceed. Uh, on to parking, <laughs> our favorite topic. Yeah, so just as a bit of background, this map on the left is an inventory that we built out kind of starting in like 2016, we, we were working on the parking requirements in the land use bylaw as part of the plan review. Um, and our amazing GIS tech and others have, I think James Collicutt actually started this parking project maybe um, as a student, um, started doing parking counts. And um, so we, we started to get some preliminary data on how much these parking lots are being utilized, how much on-street parking is being utilized and trying to bring um, some real numbers. I realize a lot of parking discussion is fairly anecdotal and quite emotional often. Um, so we were trying to bring some of that to the discussion. Uh, we, we did reference a 2018 report that Trevor and I put together um, that kind of goes through a whole bunch of different areas of, of parking management in the town. And I won't go into that in great detail, but uh, essentially what some of it comes down to is this level of service. And so through the parking counts, the way we were looking at the downtown at the time, um, and this really is 2018, 19, but we're not sure the numbers are any different today. Um, we try to distill it down to some of these statements um, that you see in the first two points. So a parking stall can be found on average within a two minute walk of any core area destination, depending on how much time is required. And um, because we do have timed parking all day and three hour and some one hour parking. Um, and then a parking stall can definitely be found on average within five minutes walk of any core area destination. So it becomes a decision point around you know, what is the level of service we want to provide given the downtown that we have? Um, I think that was quite useful at the time to, to frame it like that. What we're working on now is trying to bring that into a 
GIS application that's really accessible, um, particularly to decision makers, so that you have something at your fingertips to be able to talk to people about how many parking stalls are available or where the parking is or what types of recent management improvements we're trying to make. Um, so these are some of the things that we've done very recently, um, just in this past year, basically. But we have gotten a, more of a working group together that meets regularly, uh, myself and Alex, uh, the compliance staff, and, and Trevor, our GIS technician, um, which has been really useful in and of itself, just to, to sort of bring back this work um, and, and to reinvigorate some of the parking counts and data collection. Um, it, it does take a while to, to get the information to a point where you're confident in actually saying that it's true or close to true. So, and I just mean by going out and actually doing the counts at different times of day, different times of the year. Uh, we did do a seasonal overnight pilot uh, this summer and in previous years, um, which was successful at uh, Railtown and the East End Gateway parking lot. Um, we are looking at trying it for winter as well. Um, we're just working through um, how we can do that, if, if at all. Um, it hasn't been the case in the past. There's um, new temporary parking that we did bring on over the summer. Um, I don't know if I should say this word, but it was part of the one way that we started doing that, uh, adding supply close to the downtown. And uh, so at the Festival Theater and at um, what used to be Johnny's service station on Elm, they've been really generous in um, allowing that as use as public parking. Uh, we are working on some things that most people probably don't really notice, but it's um, improving signage related to compliance, um, reviewing problem areas. A lot of the problem areas, if you went through that 2018 report, we, we went through them all as a group and we really think they're all still the same. That's from the eyes of compliance going around and checking those areas. Um, and yeah, I mentioned the, the GIS dashboard and some of the parking work um, that we, we're going to bring back. It's just, uh, it does take some time to, to build that out. Uh, the other thing, just on the right side of this, we did do a bit more of a sort of micro look at the parking situation. Um, this is a really rudimentary sort of space allocation, but I think the workshop that we did um, showed that for council as well, that you know this site isn't laid out in perhaps the most efficient manner. Um, and there is a lot of space at the rear of this site for parking. So um, we've done some preliminary layouts. There could be upwards. I don't want to say the really high end of the numbers, but you know there could be 70 parking stalls um, created. That's just surface parking. Um, and these were just sort of some of the I think fairly obvious findings of, of doing this work. So the, there, there's more new parking supply that could be created here, just, just the nature of the site. Uh, the supply elsewhere may be needed anyway. Um, it's sort of like the traffic issue. We may have to build a parking lot at some point. Um, I, I do note here that some of those can be quite challenging. And um, when you're working with Marsh Body, um, Acadia or adjacent land that that, that is needed. Um, we are assuming that no underground parking will be created. Um, I did note the cost of underground parking. It's, uh, I talked to someone who did a project recently and it was $75,000 per spot to create underground parking. Uh, I'm just looking here, I, I think I've said most of this, but uh, at, the, at the library site, obviously there would be some impact depending on where the building was exactly. Um, but again, I, I think this is similar to traffic that I think an appropriate level of service could be provided for parking on either site. I don't, I don't think it's um, the linchpin and the decision point. And yeah, I think that's the end of the parking piece. Councilor Ingham? Um, I have a question, but it's not really directly related to the library study. So when you were talking about the pilot, uh, the project um, for parking overnight, on the Eastern Gateway in Railtown, and then you said possibly uh, in the winter when the winter ban comes on. So you're, would that be a less of a parking, or because you said we're just you're thinking about that as a project too. So would it be both areas? And um, was that well received? 
the parking was was there quite a bit of people parking on that I mean we I do get questions of people coming into to Wolfville and then spending the night at a friend's house or something where do they park right I mean, so just to be clear how will this work in the winter the short answer is I don't think we're sure yet. We're still working on it. Uh, Caden's doing uh, some pieces of work looking around and um, Alex as well is talking to his crews and it becomes more so maybe an operational and snow clearing and yeah. um, the summer is much easier. Yeah, so, but it, it has been well received in the summer. Thanks for Butler. Um, just two questions. Um, uh, in the report, it talks about the the parking at Acadia University. It says Acadia University has 1,174 parking spaces on campus. Almost all of them are paid permit parking. Do you by any chance know how many parking permits they actually sell above the number of spots they have? I get every now and then there's someone that says, I can't find a spot. They have a pass, can't find a spot on campus. They're full or the, at the athletics complex, if somebody wants to use the athletics complex, sometimes they have to buy a pass to park there, but they're not associated with Acadia. So I didn't know beyond the parking spots available, how many permits they actually sell. Okay, next question. Um, <clears throat> with the Legion under construction right now and eventually 292, will there be additional spots added to that lot in behind? Yes. Okay. Uh, quite a bit more. I want to say, do you know that number off the top of your head? 20 something more at least? Yeah. 23? That's yeah. what I remember from the presentation. Okay. Okay. And will that, and that'll be what type of parking? Will that be like Legion only or um, e yeah. I think the intention would be that it's all all day parking. Okay. As it is now. Okay. Yeah. It'll just sort of blend in with what's already there. Yeah. Okay. Those are my questions. Good. That's Councilor McKay. <clears throat> I mean, parking is a personal thing because I, again, I, I don't ever have a problem. Maybe I should not done wood. I have a problem <laughs> but realizing that I am capable of walking. So it doesn't really bother me that I might have to park further away. And if I'm in a rush, I'll run instead of circling the block a few times to find a parking spot. That, I, and I understand that's a personal choice, but I guess it comes back to the same thing. I, I think we need more parking anyway, especially all day for people who come and staying. I've heard really good things about the overnight parking uh, throughout the summer. I think uh, having some in the winter would also be good for visitors that do come. Um, people who used the wine bus or stayed overnight, uh, you know, at. Um, the establishments or Airbnbs that stayed here and stayed down, or parked down in town, um, those types of things. And I think that's a safety concern too. I think that those are important. Um, but again, it's it's full circle again, because if we had better transit or active transportation, we would need less parking again. So it all comes back to that circular discussion all the way around of how are we going to address all three together to make a really um, great downtown space where everyone can enjoy it. Councillor, oh, sorry. No. No. Councillor Butler? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm just going to throw in a request for parking for uh, bike parking. And I mean, more and more people have fairly expensive e bikes, and um, a lot of people won't, don't want to bring them downtown and leave them because we don't have a place that is, uh, dare I say, videoed with video cameras or something, but certainly. There are, there are, that would be a good thing to consider with the active transportation initiatives because if, as we want more and more people to bring their bikes downtown, we don't want them not to because they're afraid of getting stolen. And I, when I see the number of bikes that get brought into town hall, there's obviously an issue. Mary, did we not talk about that at one other time? We having did. a covered space, yes. maybe that even so that when you drove your bike, it stayed yeah. dry, you yeah. get home like we, it we wasn't wet. When you and I, I think we it. even said that little yeah. gore of land uh, at front at the end of the, the Harris building. Yeah. It goes right. little triangle right. of land. That, yeah. I don't know what it's, I don't know who owns that. Yeah. Budget. Anyways. Budget. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a thought as part of our AT plan.
Okay, the next um, item is about costing, which is perhaps a little more speculative at this stage of the process, but uh, we just tried to put together something fairly high level to get um, an idea of around magnitude of cost. Uh, so there's different Canadian cost guides that um, include construction costs. And so for municipal offices and library in the first scenario, I, I'm just putting numbers in here that are round and easy to, <laughs> to illustrate the idea, right? I, I wasn't making any assumptions on the size of the facility, but that's really what some of this comes down to is, uh, you know, our current budget in our capital plan is 5.6 million for the combined facility. And you can see quickly how, depending on what kind of cost you want to apply at this point, you can really pull the number up. Um, the thing that we don't have in here um, are different types of allowances that would be typical of this type of budget, um, which are largely percentages. And so if I, I have some examples here, um, as you get into more detailed costing, obviously the, these things would become more of an issue or um, a reality. Um, but yeah, this was just really to show the magnitude um, of, of where we're at today and, and um, why we sort of need to get into the next level of detail um, so we can better inform our budget and make some of the decisions that will be required. Do I have another one? Yeah. Uh, so some of the other site considerations, um, again, we, we haven't gone out and pulled equipment onto sites and, you know, done a full geotechnical analysis of these things, but um, it's very likely in similar conditions. People are building things throughout the valley in very similar conditions. Um, so we would want to do that at the current library site, um, likely some type of um, piling would be required, similar to the 292 um, experience. The, um, the flood proofing, um, we'd have to do that to at least 10 meters, which would have some, some cost, some additional cost. And then the question around heritage integration or restoration, um, depending on where the project went on that site uh, with that aspect. And I, I mean with the current building, whether it was integrated or not. Uh, here at Town Hall, uh, obviously there would be some um, demolition, whether that's full or partial. Again, it, it's hard to nail a cost, um, but it's in the hundreds of thousands um, to, to demolish a building like this. Um, and then at either site, um, there's these, these premiums essentially of um, wanting to hit our aspirations around accessibility and um, environmental sort of climate change, building related emissions um, into the future. Um, I think, yeah. So that's the cost piece. I don't know, Mike, do you wanna add anything to the cost side of this? I don't think I'd add anything in detail because you've got good information in there. I like the fact you use rounded numbers so that we're, we are speaking, you know, estimates. Uh, what I would point out is each year we do the capital plan with council, it evolves. So a few years ago, the combined projects were 4.7 million. Now they're 5.6, likely heading into this next iteration. It will have to creep up a bit. And that ultimately council, and I think the way Devin has it laid out, it, it, it forces you to think about if it's a hard cap dollar amount, then you back up and it will in all likelihood shrink the square footage. And is that acceptable? All the way to is if there's a certain square footage and service level that council wants, that'll drive the number up. And ultimately that has an impact on the rest of the capital budget. What streets might have to be deferred, what other projects might be impacted. And that's, I guess, at the end of the day, the annual process we go through with the capital. Comments, questions, Councilor McKay? More on the square footage side than maybe cost, um, which I guess will affect cost. Um, my most recent experience would be the school. And we said, this is the space we need and we built it. And we said to whatever it was called at that point, the Department of Education, 
if you build it, they will come and they did. And now it's too small. Um, so I feel that this is gonna happen with this as well. And especially if we continue to grow the West End, the East End, we increase density, what, you know, and then you build a spectacular library and facility um, will be more popular than we already are. So, which is all great, um, but it is also, I don't want, I don't know what that does to the budget or the fundraising or whatever, the combination thereof, um, but I hate to build something and then go, oh gosh, it's a big regret. So I don't know if those numbers are <coughs> big enough, fine, if they're overestimated, I don't know what that estimation was based on. So or maybe they're just numbers thrown out, I don't know, but um, that is a concern for me. Um, I, I agree with uh, Councillor McKay's uh, concern. I'm just wondering those numbers, particularly for the town, that included a combination of a square footage for the people in this building, for the people over by the dikes. Like, how is there a, per, um, a percentage, a cushion that was added on to both sites given current use versus projected use? I can't remember that from the previous presentation. The needs assessment uh, for the library is 9,000 square feet. So one of the numbers there, I have 10,000. Um, but the municipal office, I think we haven't got to a point of detailed design and some of the integration that may be possible. But there was a needs assessment done a number of years ago, a facility condition that talks about 10,000. Um, whether that is still appropriate, especially in the age of accessibility, uh, the extra space. So I, I'm not sure it's, these could be, I'm hearing maybe low. Mm -hmm. Councillor, Councillor Elliott. And, and Devin, is it a, a given that we would include police space in the municipal part of this, or is that up in the air? I think that's still to be determined because depending on where the police review goes, there's different options where we could potentially accommodate policing space. So that could be with the town hall library facility, but it could be somewhere else. It could be a full standalone type of facility or it could be more of a community office type of facility. So I think once that police review works through the process, we'll have a better idea and be able to answer that. Yes, I, I agree with uh, those who have expressed concern about the library size. I feel that, and I could be wrong because uh, Councillor McKay is right, we suggested we needed two more classrooms or at least one more and they said no. And um, right away there was a need for another one. But I do feel with respect to the town, we can figure out what the staffing space requirements are and what council's requirements are. and. Frankly, it's mostly staff and council who come into a, a town hall. So while we need to make sure that there's some extra space, I'm less worried about that than I am under, um, under calculating space for the library because I fully believe, and please don't take this in a way that is too negative, but I never go into the current library except to see Alice sometimes I talk to her. Pardon? It's, well, yeah, there's no reason that if um, you go in to talk to somebody or meet somebody, but it's not a place that I want to just sit around. You feel kind of strange sitting in those places, even if you are waiting for a specific person. But if we think of the, the Halifax Library, and there are smaller, really lovely libraries that you do want to hang out all day, you do want to do things, you do want to meet and, uh, and use the library in a way that a library can be used. So I really, really want to make sure that we get that right and that we don't underestimate it. And, and uh, Director McLean is absolutely right. We are gonna to have to look at the cost, but I'd rather start from something too big and then see if we have to, we just can't afford something that big than say, this is how much we can afford and build to that. And so I, when we get to that, um, I think we, I think the library is what concerns me most. And I see the library people shaking their heads. So I guess I'm, I'm there. So, okay.
the la I, th I believe this is the last sort of discussion piece, but there's um, there was a bit of a segue about RCMP um, being a bit unknown. Uh, the fire hall being relocated, uh, I believe we just provided a statement that it will be relocated uh, from this current site. Um, the future uses of the current library um, and the registered heritage building that's there, um, we, we obviously haven't put a ton of work into what that could be, but we did provide a few examples in the report of either public or private things that that could happen uh, on that site. I think the, the list is probably much longer than the one we provided. Um, there's other partnership exploration that is certainly needed. We, when we were doing the needs assessment 2017, 18, um, we had lots of different people approaching us at that point, um, wanting to sort of be in the library or part of the project. So I think um, once the site is decided and some um, sort of momentum built, I think there will be a lot of interest in that. And then the last point was just uh, around business continuity and the way that the construction is managed. Um, obviously that's fairly critical um, that we <laughs> continue on. So that will be a key part of um, however we are moving forward. I, yeah, so I'll just cover the next steps. Uh, we, at this point are just looking at moving forward with if there's a decision uh, with some type of basic concept and illustration, gathering some information on where we're at today um, and working with the library on um, pushing some of that information out around fundraising and awareness. Uh, we would then propose to work on an issue, an RFP. Uh, so this would um, be reviewed by council. Uh, so we're all on the same page and it would outline to a consulting team what you know what we want as a process, um, public consultation, uh, costing, detailed design. Um, as we get really close um, to 26, 27 is where it's sitting in our budget. I think this will serve us really well um, going through a process like that. I did provide an estimate on how long a process like that would take. Um, Mayor Donovan may know better than I, but um, it would certainly take some time. I think that uh, that is the end of my slides. So we'll finish there. General questions, comments from council? Thank you, good presentation. Later? No, now is when you get to ask them. I'm just kidding. You. Yeah, most of the stuff I have is about once we get to the like design, what should be oh. in it, all that kind of I, stuff. Okay. Councillor McKay. Are we making a decision on site that like, site. are we at, there is a motion. Okay, somewhere. so are we having discussion between the two of them? Why don't, if there's nothing else other than this motion, then why don't we open up the discussion on your thoughts recite? Okay, <laughs> Councillor Butler, okay. Councillor Ingham, I'm assuming Councillor yeah. McKay, so. Okay. I feel I already know the answer, but the existing library site will, cannot be tore down, correct? It will be used for something. We just don't know what yet. Correct. I think to clarify this, when you say cannot be, it is not as a heritage it's, it's building. It's a designated, it's designated. So it cannot Desi be. Well, designated heritage. There's a process if one wanted to tear them down. I just don't want the oh, public okay. to know that that it could never be torn down because we did have a heritage building torn down. Yes, I think I'm. I think it was more once this one goes yes, up, the other one just not, doesn't disappear. That's not our. Okay, situation. that's yes. I should have worded that. Um, I might as well comment on the the the, oh, right. the, the existing site. Oh, I I'm for it being at three fifty nine Main. I do like the site. Um, I like the design with the additional parking. Um, I think if if I, in my mind, know what it's going to end up looking like in a way, it would be something that I'd want people to see and it'd be visible um, as long as it doesn't get too wide or too tall to uh, take away some views and, and not look uh, too odd on Main Street. But I think, you know, not out with the old and with the new, but it would it'd be really neat to come into town and actually see something really awesome and, and cool on Main Street. Professor Ingham. 
Yes, so there's one clear indicator for me, and that is when you went through everything, and I do want to say that I appreciate this, the whole presentation that you did, um, and the comparisons, you know, there wasn't a lot of difference except for the climate issue, <laughs> and that is huge for me, so even before you, you did all this, I was in preference and did like this current location, given the fact of the flood risk and the differentiation between the site elevations. I prefer this, so I am in favor of it. Professor McKay. Uh, I, I'm still torn, I'll be honest. Um, for the reasons of I, I, if you put one here, what is the opportunity cost of a place sold? If you, which is a big piece of property on Main Street, which I would think have, would have a fairly decent assessment value. Um, if you spilled something uh, in the parking lot or somewhere down by uh, the current library, um, there's no obstruction from a working standpoint, whether you're the library or the town. So there's nothing, there will be operational costs to move both of those things somewhere else during the one or two year process of building a building. Um, not only cost, but energy, time, like so many other things I'm sure that I'm not thinking of. Um, construction on Main Street versus construction on Front Street would be drastically different. Uh, having a construction site here would be interesting. Um, and then I worry about that site being abandoned. Um, what could be done with it? Um, I'd really like to see a plan because I'd hate to see it empty and just um, deteriorate. And, and if it's not being used, what are the costs to keep it maintained um, by us, I would assume. Um, and then, because th the parking and the traffic worked out to be the same and needed to be mitigated in whatever way we looked at. And then it, the climate change is certainly the big one um, that, that offsets those other ones that were my concerns on the other side. And I wonder what it would look like or what could be done to offset it, to build it to a standard that was sufficient or, or meets the requirements. Because we tell everyone that is down below us to do all of those things and is that I find that to be hypocritical and I find that a, a little bit in part of my, my heart to think that we'd be hypocrites to say everybody else built something uh, flood proof, but we're just not gonna do it because it's too hard or too much. Um, so the two things just, so concerns on all of those fronts, um, both sites are great. I think they're both great options. I just can't get them to equal out in my head quite yet. I don't know if those are questions or questions, comments or both. Or, or, <laughs> just, just before, can I ask a question of clarification, I guess, from the CAO? So is council, is committee of the whole making a decision or is this, are we making a decision as to what will go to the, we will suggest is our recommendation to the public or is when this goes to council, will this be a final decision on site? The way it's written is that this would be a decision on the site so that we go out to the public okay. with so one location is... and we can talk about this location and get the feedback. Right. Uh, and the suggestion would be that you have the discussion today. And if you are prepared to move forward with the recommendation, it not go to council until November. Right. So there's still okay. a little bit okay. of time if there's any other questions mm -hmm. or, or issues that we need okay. to bring more information thank back. You. Deputy Mayor. Okay. Um, thank you, Mayor Donovan. I, I just like to, um, follow up on the comments that um, Councillor Butler made, because I agree with everything he said. I, I like the idea of uh, uh, a, something on Main Street, an, an iconic, interesting piece on Main Street. Um, I'm, I'm definitely in favor of the Main Street site. Um, the first reason, or the main reason, is the climate. Um, I think that it would really be irresponsible for us to build something like this at this cost on a floodplain. Like that's just, and we know we have things there now, and I think people are going to try to mitigate future problems, but um, I, I think we really cannot go there um, considering the knowledge we currently have about the, the water levels, 
what we've experienced with Fiona. We know where things are going. We know the Atlantic coast is going to be producing more storms like that. I just don't think we can, from a climate perspective, I, I think there really is no question. Um, I'm also not in favor of selling municipal assets, um, either this building, parks or land. I think that we need to hold on to all of our municipal assets. Um, uh, because once they're gone, they're gone. We could never buy them back. Um, and, and our town is growing. We have the West End development. We have the East End development. We have more people coming into town. The chances are that we will need more assets than um, or greater use of the ones that we have. Um, and I think generating revenue is an absolutely crucial thing. But I don't think selling the assets that we have especially for future generations, I think that would not be a responsible thing for us to do. Um, I think that there is opportunity for us to support um, safe use of uh, the existing library. I know that the, um, the market is, the farmer's market is looking for expanse. We have that whole area now with the oven you know, it is a growing concern, a growing area for a number of different activities. And I would, I would hate to see those jeopardized because we're now going to put a big building there. Because if we did put um, the new library town hall in that space, it would get rid of the community oven. I, I think I think there's no way that that could survive because it, of the parking. It was there. It's when in the we plan. approved it, we said it would have it, it could had to understand it might move. But right now, the way it's functioning with the parking area, with tying into the food kind of hub, or you know that we're that's being generated there, I, I think it would be a shame to lose what is growing, especially knowing what the the farmers market's hopes are. Um, so I, I I think that there is an opportunity if we're looking at generating revenue. Um, that we could generate revenue by renting that out to private use. I'm sure that there's some commercial, you know, um, use that that could happen. And uh, I don't, I don't think that that building will be abandoned at all. Um, I think there are a lot of people who would be very keen to to have access to that building, who may be able to invest in changing the, the ground floor so that it's more accessible. I, I, I can't imagine that not being a possibility to some degree. Um, and so but I think for all of those opportunities that might exist there, but also the climate, the iconic structure coming in, I, for me, there's really no, no question of, of the site, the preferred site for me is Main Street. Councillor Elliot. Thank you. <clears throat> a few years ago, you know, I, I could not have conceived of anything but the preservation of that old train station and the new purpose it found 27 years ago. I just, but the workshop that we did back in February made me rethink it seriously. And I was just sitting here remembering council discussing Railtown and should Railtown go on what was commonly known as a floodplain at the time. And I believe it was only Councillor Zimmerman who voted against that project, but they're right by the harbor. <laughs> I don't know. I just think we have to be wise to what may happen in the future. And I agree with the deputy mayor that uh, we could have a, a very, publicly attractive building on this corner. Um, I'd like to see the facade preserved, but you know. <laughs> anyway, that's how I would vote. <laughs> Thank you. No. We'll work the bricks into the morning. <laughs> save the bricks. Yeah, save the bricks. Um, I, uh, as Councillor McKay, I struggled with that. And certainly at the last session, my, and my concern was really traffic. Some of the comments you've made today are not things I had considered, but uh, construction here, we think the one way, may its name never be mentioned again, uh, was an issue, but you know, the, these, will, these will all pass. I, I have come to believe that uh, 
for reasons of climate change. And I remember a number of years ago, I'm sure the library folks remember uh, when the St. John River flooded in Fredericton, downtown flooded. And of course their library is below um, the water level of the St. John River. And I, I can't remember what they did, but they were a client of mine at the time and they uh, had real problems. I think they sandbagged all around that big library, but uh, it certainly is something that uh, I am now more aware of. I too would love to see a really iconic building and I do not see the facade kept, but you know, we can, <laughs> we'll have time to have that discussion later. I, I see more glass and seeing people inside enjoying themselves, but um, my, so I, I will support this site. I am very concerned about traffic, uh, both during construction, but more after. And, and I really think we need to, uh, have a good plan for that and have a have an innovative plan for where people can store their their bikes and where people can walk in a pleasant facade and not with all the the loud trucks and the motors that are going down the street now I think that's I, I think this could be just an amazing uh, new town look uh, but we have to do a lot of things so well, I do, Councilor McKay, I, I do think that you made some really good points and I still am concerned about those. I, I guess I'm, I'm able to fall a little bit more on, on the side of supporting this, but still uh, respect those reservations because they're also ones that I have. Other comments? Councilor McKay? Yeah, I still, I, I just can't get past it all. Um, and when we put it here in this iconic building, I think it's going to divide us a little further because we want to keep the facade, we want to have glass, we want to have this, we want a connection to the dikes, we don't want to hear traffic, we don't want to hear the cars going by on Main Street. I think that's going to be a really... Um, Roll up your sleeves. Somewhere. Whoa, I'm like, whoa. Um, and, and I guess that's just why I see that's like being a little, has a little more flexibility in style as well um, and and won't feel like you're in Halifax sitting on Spring Garden Road because that's what it's going to feel like sitting outside having if I want to do that I'll go up next door to Pam and have my coffee so I, I just feel it's just a little commercialized if it's on Main Street um, where if it was a little more down that way when I think my first term on council we talked about everything being there we had lights going across the park things were all connected it was that was sort of our um, I forget what the term was you used, Evan, but there was a term, cultural hub, yeah, um, and that's how I saw that, and maybe um, that's what I'm a little more attracted to it in terms of a space. But. Deputy Mayor. But we have lots of design options. Thousands. We could make it look like the, we could make it look like the train station. <laughs> Yeah, the library used to be on Main Street. I yeah, remember the when library used here. to be on the corner right on here. On that corner there. And where this when is, I first moved back here, it did. Yeah, sorry. So, um, I yeah. hate to use, sorry, can, is it okay to yeah, speak? Are you, yeah, I'm yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I hate to use this word, but I'll use it. I, I feel like, um, but <laughs> I'm not using that one. It's a, it's a word that's in the dictionary. <laughs> it's a word that's in the dictionary. We had to talk about words with, as the librarians are walking in here. We're talking about made up words. Anyway, that's, I digress. Um, the climate and the flood risk trump every single other thing that that's on here for me so i i hear everything else and we want to but right now we're deciding on a site location and i want this to be here for a long time to it to to it to evolve and, and everything and i can't get over all the lectures i've attended at acadia about climate and it's and all the flooding that we've had in florida and, and all the coastal communities we need to move up and so i it's hard for me to even see anything else because i am so excited about this project and so this is the location that I feel strongly about. And I see exactly where you're coming from, but I can't get over the climate. I can't get over the, the challenges we've had um, in climate. Um, Councillor Butler. And I just, I just wanna say like back when we had our first, our first discussion uh, last fall, last fall, mm -hmm. last fall, was it really? Or the spring? Spring. spring. Um, I was dead set against Main Street, completely against it, uh, because I assumed that what was there now 
was going to disappear and it was never going to be used again and it was going to just whittle away. Um, I'm hoping, and I and I I completely value everything that Councillor McKay said because it the, it all went through my head. I'm hoping that through the process of discussions of traffic, discussions of parking, discussions of look, it we won't get into. I don't want the Halifax Library on Main Street. I do not want that. I want something that is unique to Wolfville that captures everything that we all love about the town that we you know add a little bit of a historical look to it it does not have to be modern um trust me my biggest fear is that I'm going to walk into this new library and there's not going to be a single book in it um, um <laughs> it is it's it's a huge because I have been to the Halifax library twice and I do not enjoy it. I do not enjoy the space. I don't like how it looks. Um, and that's the thing. I don't think there should be a coffee shop in it. But anyway, we'll get to that later on. I know, I know, and I love coffee. Um, so I'm hoping that I'm hoping that through the okay, process. Sight, sight, I'm, sight. Yeah, so I'm hoping that through the process, all of the worries that I have about all those things will be discussed so that what does end up on this site if this site is chosen that it will sort of blend all of those things in i'm anxious to hear what the public would have to say um at the moment the climate thing was a big thing for me as well so and now knowing that that space can be used for something else um it's just i'm a little more at ease with uh with the process councillor elliott can i make a motion <clears throat> i was going to say would someone like to put a motion on the floor <laughs> I need Laura's help. <laughs> okay. I would move that committee of of the yes. whole direct council to direct staff to proceed with the planning of a co-located town hall and library at the existing town hall site 359 Main Street and continue with next steps as outlined in the director of planning's report. Thank you. And a seconder, uh, Deputy Mayor McGuire Voss. Is there, are there any other comments, Councillor McKay? So before <clears throat> we do this, so are we gonna have a discussion on what construction time, what it's gonna look like, all of those concerns around traffic, are we gonna mitigate them before we look to build this? Because otherwise we will just be saying we're going to build a building and um, maybe just speak a bit about the RFP because the RFP is really going to yeah I mean we'd go through an RFP and design consultation process much more discussion on all of the pieces that you're talking about and then have to decide what sort of construction method um, and management we would want to um, use at the time when we're tendering so we're a ways away from that but right, yeah and then what about the traffic and parking in the meantime will we mitigate that before this starts to be built well yeah I, I think I think it's a budget discussion because when we were talking about the light before um, it was deferred in part because we knew there was a future discussion on the town hall library and it was thought that maybe there some economies of scale depending on where it was located to kind of do it as one project there may be also benefit of doing the light in advance of the project so I think through the budget you know we can take a look at where does it fit when does council want us to tackle it so if this is out in 26 27 you know there's some different options around that um, the parking lot behind the east end gateway is slated um, for next summer and that's when we'll see some significant improvement to that end we will get some more parking spots we will improve the lighting and the connection to the trail like all of those pieces so that will happen in advance and then with the transit study and the micro transit piece you know that work is supposed to happen the next 12 months they're going to be doing some electrification of the fleet that has to be spent before 2027. But some of the changes to the routes are going to happen prior to that too. So some of those pieces will happen before we get this built. Some of them you may decide you want to have as part of the project scope itself. So that'll be a decision to council and bring those pieces back. If I can just add, I'm assuming that the uh, there will be an RFP that will have a, a council and public and library consultation process about size and what goes in it and and all of that but there should also be as part of that a final report implementation which would be 
when do you do each step? Like, when do you, when do you tear down? What, what, what are you doing with traffic at that time? And it, so on. So I would, so all we're, as I understand it, what we're doing today is, is we have a motion for a site that if it is approved, it would allow this RFP to go out and say, let's start a design process for this site. And parallel to that would be an implementation, including addressing all the things that, and other things that you have identified. Is that how you see it, Devin? Yeah, I mean, in any major construction project, there's a number of different mitigation concerns, you know, in downtown Halifax, they have to deal with, you know, active sidewalks and different things. So we're going to have a lot of those types of issues once we get, um, yeah, further along and have some type of design established. I think what I'm hearing is that council wants to see sort of, okay, these are all of the pieces we've talked about. So from this point until sort of post-construction, what's the timeline, ganted out, what comes first so that you're able to see it sort of in a project charter, but to weigh in on when and how council wants to see some of those elements come together. And I think we're saying the same thing, but just for clarity, just to bring it back so that you have a clear understanding that all the concerns raised tonight are addressed, are addressed through the process. Thanks, Councillor Elliott, and then Councillor McKay. Oh, oh, did you not mean to have been Councillor McKay? Sorry. Yeah, so that, that is because I don't want to start something and go, did you even think about this? Because that will be bad um, for all of us. Um, so I just want to make sure that we're going to see that probably that RFP, we're going to see the process in which all of these things are going to take place um, and agree that this is the way it's going to come about. And I, I agree, Halifax does some of the things. They also are way bigger and get around a whole lot. There's other ways around. When you come into Main Street, there's basically one way in. So we don't have a whole lot of options to go around. <laughs> um, and if we do that, we, I mean, there's one, go up Sherwood, um, and we're gonna increase a whole bunch of traffic through residential areas. So we've got, I just, I wanna be Which very be conscientious. It should yes. be something that we game out Think as well. Think about, yes. It should be something we game out as well, that if we know that people are going to go up Maple, Sherwood, frankly up Locust and go the wrong way on Star. So we need to prepare for that and prepare residents for that. How we're gonna handle that. Absolutely. And just adding to all the traffic and parking, because we just did the crosswalk policy, the crosswalks may need to be looked at again too, right? For safety issues with the increased traffic. Just, yeah. Deputy Mayor? I, I, I fully um, understand and appreciate and agree with the concerns around traffic. To be honest, I don't, the, the library is not that far away from this building. I don't see that the traffic issues would be that much reduced if we were building on the library site. Um, I mean, the actual work site would be, but you'd have that's to your trust. Concern. That's your concern yeah. for either site. If you do it on Main Street, it will be way worse than if you did it down there. Yeah, I'm just saying, yeah. I don't know that it would be that much. I mean, it would be heavier, well, but I, think I do it's think like, it's, it's like the house that uh, that just had a whatever pipe go under the street at the east end of Main Street and, and we had to close the street, that part of the street for a day. So that many, so it yeah. will affect Main Street. So it just, but I think it would affect Main Street regardless, I guess is my, you may not have to, we may have to close a main street, which is more than closing a front street. So yeah, I, I, think, I just think you know, even if you have yeah. to close front street, but then there would yeah. be issues. There, the, yes, on for main sure. Street regardless of where. I'm not arguing about what site is going to have more. Like it, I think it'd be a little bit less down there. But if if regardless, closing main street and making sure whatever street we close having a plan in place to make sure we're mitigating the damages that we put onto people's yeah, is, is important. Are we ready for a vote? All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so it's a unanimous site. Too late. Uh, I don't have the agenda in front of me anymore, Laura. Oh,
Um, yeah, I think that's the next meeting. That's the next meeting. Yes. So, uh, anybody for public input? Would any? You have three minutes if you'd like to make a comment. Um, first of all, <laughs> Do you state your name and. My name is Janet Ness. Um, I am the town representative on the meeting. You should just make sure you're on. Make sure your mic's on because we are recorded. Thanks, Jody. Hi, I'm Janet Ness. I'm the town representative on the Annapolis Valley Regional Library, and I am chair of the Annapolis Valley Regional Library Board. 2020. 2024 um, is the 75th anniversary of Wolfville becoming a public library in the Annapolis Valley Regional System. To have this decision today um, means that we can look to the future, and that future is going to continue on 75 years of um, past uh, service to the town of uh, Wolfville. And um, I think this is a really progressive. Um, step that you're taking today. Um, we do anticipate more people coming to town and having a place where all of those new people can come and be kind of integrated into the community. I think a library of this nature in this location um, is an excellent choice. And I think we will have a lot of uh, um, public um, um, help in getting, having this come to fruition. So thank you everybody for all of the diligence that you've put into um, coming up with this decision today. And I know that there are many, many decisions to be made. We have upgraded, this is the last of our libraries in the last 10 years that we have um, upgraded or uh, purpose built. And so we know all of the steps that have to go through that and we'll be working with the town um, very closely um, to have that um, come to a really positive and iconic um, uh, building in this location. So thank you. Thank you thank very you, much. Janet. All right. Um, that being, I guess, public input, uh, could I have a motion to adjourn, please? So moved. Deputy Mayor, second. Councillor Elliott, all in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Aye.